goodbye lovely and slightly spooky apartment. These are our last couple hours in Chiang Mai, Thailand. A beautiful place. I hope to spend many a more time here. Yeah, I'm just gonna have a bit of a wander again for the next couple hours. Maybe go to a coffee shop or something and head to the airport and fly to Bangkok. And then we're flying to Beijing from Bangkok. Looking forward to it. Well, we just organised airport transfer for 80 baht each, 160 baht, getting from this hotel to the airport. What a great time it's been here in Chiang Mai. Looking forward to going to China, though that's going to be pretty crazy. Interesting. So I did cap. Great entertainment in Thailand is the adverts. There's so many adverts and billboards in the streets and you just think like what the hell is going on there? There's like absolutely no context because it's all in Thai writing. There's like some so an advert where it was like two guys sitting at, at a bar and then like there was like a woman sticking a finger like in his drink and they were like that. Like, what what the hell is that about? I've got no idea. Like, security and boarding the plane. Everybody wants to say goodbye, except me. It's taken a long time to check in. We've been in this queue for like an hour now. Still got a while to go. This is what Bangkok Airport looks like in the international departures area. Looks futuristic. I'm in some sort of NASA space complex. The last piece of Thai food is probably the worst since it is airport food and it's extremely expensive. But we'll uh, pick something to say goodbye to the beautiful cuisine of Thailand. Goodbye, my love. Well, mine's arrived. It's pork and noodles and vegetables. I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> I honestly have no idea what the hell that is. I'm sure we'll figure it out. Pickly? If anyone knows what that is, tell us. I've got no idea. That was so good. Delicious. Surprisingly, really, really good. Spicy and lovely, and the pork was sweet. 
I recommend coming to KIN, K I N, Bangkok Airport. It's out of board now. Hello China. Beijing taxi drivers give you 1,000 times more hassle than any in Bangkok. Fact. Two different beds. <sighs> Oils that I'll probably get charged 50 quid to eat. Good view out the window. <laughs> literally, like, I'm not even kidding when I say this. Out there are aeroplanes, so this is literally the fumes of an aeroplane coming through the window. Very nice. That's just brilliant, that bathroom, isn't it? It's great how you can see. Like, if you're lying in bed, you can just see someone out in Beijing. I suppose in a bad mood already. Hopefully, tomorrow's a better day. We've gone to this, this guy said, taxi. I said, oh, I'll meet that taxi. He was like, oh yeah, so when it was car, it didn't even look like a taxi. As soon as we got in, he like handed me a leaflet and the one that charged like 430 yen, which is like 43 quid. And like... It was a seven minute car ride. Uh, seven minutes, man. And I was like, and I just argued the toss with them and then I'm getting out of this car, leaving, walking to a different taxi, I asked about five taxis, none of them used the meter. Yeah, like literally I got on a taxi, I ended up being 100 yen, which is still 10 pound. And I'm still at the airport. <laughs> I got a taxi from the airport to the airport. Oh, what? Oh, man. Better vibes tomorrow. Bye. Felt like I should apologise for the negativity. I just, I feel like this is a, a good little insight onto when travel doesn't, doesn't always go as smoothly and as nicely as you'd want it to be. Bit frustrating when it's like, I thought we were going to be here because we are landed, supposed to land at like 20 past 1 and thought we'd be here by sort of 2 o'clock and be able to get like, you know, 4 or 5 hours sleep and get out and see the city but it's now like half 3 because like you have to like fill in a load of different forms and stuff just to end up um, and then I only took out like 500 yen I thought like 50, 50 pounds that'll be like That'll be fine. And then I've got some fella getting us in his daft little car asking for 430 to go to the centre of the city. I'm like, well, I, I don't want to go to the centre of the city. I, I've showed you the address of the hotel. This is it. It's at the airport. It's not even far. And then he's like, oh, 400 then. I'm like, that's 30 less. Like, we, uh, like, we just got out. So I walked away. He's chasing us down the street, shouting different numbers, shouting out the window at us. It's like really 3 o'clock in the morning. This is like a weird place in China where there's a plane taking off outside my room, man. There's a plane taking off outside my room. And I paid 10 quid to get here, with, and I got off a plane and paid 10 quid to go to where another plane is. So I just wanted to give a little insight on the when sort of travelling. Not necessarily goes wrong, but when it just doesn't go as smoothly as planned and doesn't go as nicely as the glorified Instagram posts and all that sort of stuff. Right, I'm rambling on. Sorry, I'll see you later. I'll see you tomorrow. Make a good video tomorrow. See you in China in six hours or something. Alright, see you later. Bye.